Hey, Brooke, how you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm not too bad. Um, let's jump straight in. Um, why don't you give people just a brief history of how you ended up with OP and, and, and uh, how you got to find me kind of thing? Okay, trying to keep it brief. <laughs> um, so I had my first, I, my first pregnancy and baby in 2018. Um, and I was, when I fell pregnant, I was what I thought I was relatively young. I think I was like 27 or 28 when I fell pregnant the first time. Um, I was running long distance kind of, um, bit, I mean, half marathons here and now I'm a, like, I'll put out there. I'm not a, I'm not like a competitive athlete. I'm a recreational runner. Um, and I like to run in groups. I go to park run. I run with friends. I enter runs for fun, long distance runs for fun. Um, I have no aspirations to run Boston or anything like that. I'm literally just your everyday recreational runner. I also played netball. So I love like, like we're active, I'm active. We live active lifestyles, but, uh, and I went to the gym, but I probably in hindsight, I was strength training for what I thought I wasn't, I had never been trained in how to train myself. So I was just going to the gym and doing some squats and some things that my physio told me to do. Um, anyway, long story short, at about 18 weeks pregnant, um, I started to get some niggles when running. Um, and I just thought, oh, I'm just tight and, um, went for another run and I pulled up and I couldn't like, barely walk. And the pain front and center was like, um, you know, around my pubic bone through my adductors. I'd never felt anything like it before. So immediately it jumped to something wrong with my baby, um, something wrong with me. Like there shouldn't be pain in that area. Like it just, yeah. Um, and then I went to the obstetrician who had a look and the bulb was perfect. Um, and um, he told me to go and see a physio. Um, and I did some research and obviously osteitis pubis kept coming up. And that was the worst thing that kept coming up. And then I was freaking out about that and freaking out about what it meant. And I'd never be able to run again. And anyway, um, that pain followed me through the pregnancy. I tried a number of things, spent a lot of money and no one could help me. Um, and the pain never really went away. Um, so I just dealt with it. I could walk and everything. I was mobile, but I was in pain. So the only thing I could tolerate was like really low uh, kind of really low impact pregnancy yoga and um, swimming um, with a pool boy between my legs. So then I went, I had the baby um, and I suppose um, for the women who are listening to this, if they are listening, um, my birth was not the type of birth that I would ever wish upon anyone who is experiencing OP. Um, I was forced to, I was induced I was forced to birth on my back. I had an epidural um, and it was quite a high epidural and it was a um, vent, um, vent house, like a vacuum delivery um, and very quick. So um, I believe that if they use that type of intervention, it's meant to be slow, but it was definitely not slow. The baby was born in the second stage of labor was I think 15 minutes and it was my first baby. So everything happened very quickly and I had very little control over that. Um, and so when the epidural wore, wore off, the pain was back, but it was back with a new intensity I hadn't felt before. So it was really, really bad. Um, fast forward four months of physio, I did start to improve a little bit um, and I thought, okay, cool, we're onto something. I started to run again and it was just back again. So I went to have a um, MRI and uh, there was a fracture to the left side of my pubic bone and chronic osteitis pubis. Um, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. It doesn't really matter. Either way, I was pretty, uh, there was a lot of changes, like bony changes and all different types. Like you could read x-rays and anyway, ultimately I was stuffed. So um, when that came around, that would have been, let me think, uh, that would have been early in the year. Um, and I went and did a, I, they said the sports doctor said you just got to rest, let the fracture heal, it'll go away, and then you'll be fine. So I rested, continued on physical therapy once I had rested uh, six weeks and then rested again, and it just wasn't getting any better. The pain was just worse. Um, it was just really bad. Um, I had another MRI which showed that the fracture had healed. I don't know how long ago, later this was that the fracture had healed, but the, the OP hadn't. So I think 
in desperation, I was online and tried to find some Facebook groups and I found a that random Facebook group and there were always people singing your praises. Um, and um, Kate Pearson was one of them and there's a few others that are there who I, um, who were, were, you know, post baby OP, but athlete, much better athletes than I could ever hope to be. And they were on there and telling me their journeys. And then I, I think I booked an appointment with you. I was in Tasmania on a holiday actually. And I booked that. I remember because I was sending the videos that I had to send to you <laughs> while on holiday in some random caravan in Tasmania, um, in Australia. So I was, um, yeah, I, um, booked the appointment and I felt, um, pretty excited and pretty, um, pretty relieved almost that I'd found something that actually worked. Cause I, I'd been to see the doctor who had told me that the, my option was surgery, um, mm. uh, which, but he told me that I would have to have cesarean births if I ever wanted to have another one and any other subsequent pregnancies I had would be painful. And that after I finished having my babies, I'd have to, um, I'd have to have surgery. So I was of the opinion that basically I had to decide, I didn't know if I could carry another baby without, like it was, it for me, it then became much bigger than will I ever like run or do mm. netball or anything again. It became like, will I actually have, because I, I never just wanted to finish at one baby. I wanted to have at least two. And um, it was about whether or not I have able to have a baby Um again so and give my son a, a brother or sister so um I was that was quite emotional for me so to find a group where um there was hope was really was really um good for me um so yeah I think I got started with you in May 2019 so this is some months on now so I've been dealing with this pain now for about a year maybe yeah maybe about a year I've been dealing with the pain because if you conclude the pregnancy so I've been in pain um for a year um, and, um, yeah, it all kind of came together. I, um, I stopped going to physio during that time. Um, I think I was still seeing Cairo every now and then, but I really just focused on my rehab and uh, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you do things when you've got kids around? Um, like I had a, I had a baby who at that point would have been like, I don't know, gosh, she would have been maybe six, seven months old, maybe six months old. Um, and you just do like, you just have to, um, I used to, and to get a block an hour and a half of rehab a day, but I would do sometimes more, um, I had to just break it up. So I would do things around him, him on the floor when he was asleep in bed, um, before he woke up after he went down at night, I just have to break it up and do it when, and do my rehab whenever I had a spare chance, um, when we had consults, you probably remember me with a baby in my arm, like, you know, I just, I had to have him there. Um, but it was, you know, I had to do it. And, um, yeah, you, you just did. He was um, a very good baby though. He <laughs> was a very good baby. It's lucky that it happened with my first baby and not my second <laughs> baby. Um, uh, anyway, so yeah, that was good. And he was a good baby. And I think that was, that was because of that, because he slept too. And I was able to really focus on my rehab that did, you know, that was, that was a saving grace too. You know, if I had a, a more of a difficult kind of baby, or if I had more than one child, maybe the rehab would have taken a bit longer. I still would have done it though. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because you have to, because yeah, you want to chase after your kids. So that was my motivation. You know, I've got to, I want to have another baby, but I also want to be able to chase after this kid when he's a toddler. <laughs> so, um, yeah, now the rehab for me though was hard and it took me a very long time. I think it took me, I don't know if I'm wanting a longest, but it would have <laughs> taken me. Uh, I remember you telling me when I was learning, teaching myself to run again, that um, uh, later <laughs> that you gave me a time um, I think we running on the spot in your house. Mm-hmm. And for most people, I think you give them a, an arbitrary time, which is much, much shorter than the time he gave me. Like I had no confidence in myself to run at all. So I think you said to me, that you, I think I had to run on the spot for like an hour in my house or something before I hit the road. Like it was a really long time. Um, no, but also, also with that, it was like, 
So like theoretically, if everyone did that in, in a lot of ways that would like guarantee success, I was kind of like, oh, she'll do this if I say it. So why didn't I just make her do the thing that's most likely to lead to success, even if it's completely unreasonable? <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, she'll do it. All right, well, cool. Like just, yeah, run right on the spot. Things. I also kind of, I also felt like, oh, if you go out and you run and the first time you run, it's not completely horrendous you'll feel so good that it'll work. I was like, oh, it'll work out well. So it won't matter if the next two runs are really bad. If you get that first one and it is really yeah. good. I was like, all right. So I was just like, all right, now I'm just like, yeah, go for it now. But yeah, normally it's 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. So I was, um, yeah, I was in a, we'll, we'll cycle back to that. But mm -hmm. the rehab took me a really long time. Um, I remember starting out and I remember getting stuck on something as simple as a body squat, as like the squat literally a squat just took me so long I just could not get it right I remember just working on that over and over and over again trying to get that right the upward dog kind of um, movement I remember I still struggle with that's probably because of my the way my back is but I I found that so hard and um my I, I, yeah I think it brought awareness to my body in a way that I hadn't really been paying attention to it for like you know because you go to physio and they say okay do clams and do um do bridges and um you know and there's a place for all of those things but I it was the basic movements of things that you do every day like you know you drop you squat to pick something up off the floor mm -hmm. or you know it's just I wasn't doing any of those things correctly and um it took me a long time to work out how not to engage my adductors and how not to, how to release my pelvic floor. Um, uh, and like, I remember walking around and thinking, okay, I, I look at the shops and like, I actually need to release my pelvic floor. I could actually, I was conscious for the first time of how much I was actually just tensing. <laughs> um, so I remember that. Um, but yeah, it did take me a long time. And then when we finally got to, uh, and I remember like kettlebell swings being really frightened of them because it was lifting something out in front of me at, at a, a kind of force. Yeah. And I remember being really frightened by anything like that that kind of really challenged me because for so long I'd been guarding. Mm. And I think it was just like I'd just been protecting basically this whole front of me. It was, um, yeah, it was... I had no confidence at this point in myself either. Like it had been so long and no one had been able to help me and I'd been told I'd need surgery. And so it was really, uh, it was so psychological, I think too. Um, so yeah, it got to a point um, and we started to run and I just had a massive flare up. I just flared right up and I just went right back. And I actually had to take a few weeks off our program, I think at a certain point. Um, later that year, it was after some months. And I remember you actually calling me because I mess I, I didn't see you an email. I was like, I'm not improving. I'm not doing good. I'm not, not, nothing's working. And I think you rang me and were just, I think you, I forget what you said, cause I was probably a bit of a mess, but <laughs> it was, it was about my mental state really, I think. Um, and I think I ended up taking a week, maybe two weeks off the program completely. And I did nothing, um, just some basic like really basic core work and some very basic, like some deadlifts and some squats and maybe some single legged things. And the pain that I had from the flare up went completely away. And for the first time I was OP pain free. And I remember thinking maybe like the pain, the flare up was just because I kept pushing myself further and further and further. Mm -hmm. My body was saying, Hey, well, and you'd sent me some pain videos and I'd, I'd watch some of the pain videos and the psychology behind pain. And I worked out at that point that it was completely in my head. Like there was so much of this now that was in my head and I had it. Like if I could stop and just do basic rehab and that my body wasn't responding, I had actually improved a lot. So I kind of did some reading and, and worked out that, yeah, I was probably going to get some flare ups as I continued to push myself, but I should expect that once that becomes normal, I'm not going to get a flare up anymore and it'll be the next thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I kind of went back into it with a very different mindset because I realized that I could actually be pain free and that my body actually wasn't broken and it was, was doing the right thing. It was stronger than what I thought it was. So I think we decided then we wouldn't, we continued with the program, but you um, changed it up for me so that I wasn't at, we put running on the back burner and we just focused on progressing through all the other exercises and moving up the stages so I was doing some pretty hard stuff that actually came after running in the program before I actually ran because in my mind running equaled pain. 
Um, so I realize that now. So we were doing like, you know, I was doing all the plyos and I was, um, I was ball slam, doing ball slam challenge after ball slam challenge after ball slam challenge. Like I remember doing the people at the gym. I was, I was so weird. Like I was <laughs> and at that point too, I'd gone back to the gym to this point. I hadn't actually been going to the gym. I'd been doing all my rehab at home, but at that point I was confident enough to enter a gym space, which was a big thing for me. I was too frightened to enter into a gym space. I thought that um, I wasn't worthy to go into a gym because I wasn't actually working out, but then I decided, no, I'm going to go back. So I did. And, I did, that was really good. So I was, I think that actually made me feel like I was, you know, strong enough and, you know, it was a mind, again, another shift of gear in my mind. Um, And then eventually once I kind of was doing all those plyos and wasn't getting any and, and, you know, I was box jumping and I was adding height (laughs) and um, I actually jumped on a big box and was doing the really quick box jumps and, I was slamming and doing all these things all together. Um, it was, um, and, you know, holding weights out in front of me and above my head and I, it was time to start to run. So I did what you told me to do like a good student. And I ran in my house um, on the spot around the, around up and down the hallway. We had a little hallway um, <laughs> and up and down the hallway baby on the floor crawling behind me because it was crawling by this point. This is how long this journey has gone now. I've got a crawler who's pushing up to stand and um, I think this is getting to November or by this point of 2019. So it's been quite a road. Um, And then eventually I went out on the road. So I started to, I got to an hour and I started to subtract time and add time onto the road with actual proper strides and proper running. And then I would, go back into the house and you know so I kind of subtracted so it took me quite a while to get to the point where I was running but I know by Christmas that year uh 2019 so probably six months after we started I ran my first 5k (laughs) so and I remember that because I sent you an email (laughs) um on Christmas day and um I just kept going from there so I had flare-ups like I had a really big flare-up I think in February the following year Um, and I couldn't get in control of that for a while, but I, and I got a bit nervous about that. I'd been having little flare ups here and there, but I think I just had increased my distance and we've increasing my distance and doing a few different things. I'd also started back at work full time and there was probably now, but I look in hindsight, the stress of getting up, going to the gym, going to work, managing a baby, picking them up, dropping them off, um, was, was full on. So my body's obviously gone into panic mode and I've had a flare up that I took me three weeks or so to control um so it was my first big flare up that took me ages to get in control of but I did um with some guidance from you and uh just keeping on top of it in my head um like it was just my body responding to external you know pressures and circumstances and it'll come back so it did um and yes I just kept doing just kept adding things in I was working out at the gym and I was doing really well and um I think by about the might have been maybe by the the by May we had um decided that I was running like I was running you know I wasn't running up to the long distance I was doing before but I was working towards it but I decided that I was strong enough now I wanted to try to have um I wanted to try to fall pregnant again. So it took us a few months, but we did. So um, by, I think, the July, we'd fallen pregnant. So it was like, okay, now we're, this is where, this is where the real test begins because I've got a pregnancy now and that's where I broke before. So I was, went into that really, really scared, but pretty disciplined. I had, by this point, I'd found my team. So I had, obviously, I, I knew that I could email you and get on. We weren't obviously having sessions by then, but I, knew that I could email you if I had any questions or I think I booked, I think in both of the subsequent pregnancies, I've booked appointments with you and had a, had one or two with you mm-hmm. um, plus emails to and fro. Um, but I had a very good women's health physiotherapist who helped me with all my pelvic floor related issues and also helped me plan for a, a safe birth that would ho- hopefully open up my pelvis and actually keep my pelvis safe, which was a big, concern of mine because I didn't want to have the cesarean if I could help it although I did go into the doctor when I first saw him and said hi nice to meet you I'm having a cesarean <laughs> um, 
but I didn't um, in the end. Um, uh, but I did lots of work with my physiotherapist around. I had it took me a bit to find her, but to work out, you know, well, this is my history. I want to avoid that. So what can we do to prevent any type of trauma and also not make me stress out in my mind, because that's going to cause flares too, if I don't trust my body. So we did lots of work and I had a very good chiro chiropractor that worked with me too, um, in terms of keeping me aligned during that pregnancy as well. So I did all my rehab every single day. I did rehab. It didn't matter if I was sick. Mm -hmm. I felt sick to my soul. And sometimes I did. I have also had a toddler, so I'm running around after them, but I was like, no, I need to keep moving. So it doesn't matter if I feel sick or gross or yuck, I'm going to keep moving. So I trained myself during that pregnancy. I didn't have any kind of, um, I did, I wasn't a member of a gym per se. I used to use my work gym. Um, and I worked out at home because I think that was also pandemic time. Maybe no, no, it was pre pandemic. It was middle pandemic. We were middle pandemic, um, but I still did a lot at home. So um, I did a mixture of kind of your rehab and other things that I I had introduced that I knew my body liked, but and I kept running until my body told me it was time to stop. So I you think know, it was about fifteen weeks in that pregnancy, which I stopped conservatively. Like I, I didn't try to push it. I think that was on your advice. You know, if you feel anything, just stop. It's not worth trying. And it, it was the right thing to do. Um, yeah. So anyway, fast forward, I had a completely pain-free pregnancy. I wouldn't say it's niggle-free. No pregnancy is, but it was definitely pain-free. And I had an uncomplicated natural delivery. Um, I delivered the baby on my, in completely in control with my own in the, not on my back on my side <laughs> and um, uh, completely fine. No, no, no complications at all. I had a slight flare after that delivery. I had a slight flare after the third one too, um, but it went away within a few days. <laughs> so um, I was fine. Um, and long story short, I've rehabbed. I used your principles of rehab and I talked to you about how to rehab after that pregnancy. I did wait I did wait six, seven weeks before starting to add in any kind of rehab um, at all, apart from just some gentle kind of little gentle things that you advised me I could do. And then I started to do some rehab, but I um, didn't start running again until the 12 week mark. And I, again, it was very slow. I ran on the spot in my house. Mm -hmm. I started again, like I started everything again, basically. You just move through it a lot quicker. So I started from stage two and just moved up. Um, and that's the same thing I've done after this third pregnancy and delivery, which is just what I'm going through now. So rehabbing through that now. So, um, but after the second pregnancy at 12 months postpartum, I ran my first post OP marathon mm -hmm. and I ran two marathons last year in mm -hmm. 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ran two marath two marathons in, which is, um, I know for a lot of people, that's not a lot. A lot of people just run marathons all the time, but for me, that was huge. So, um, yeah, um, two marathons at yeah, 12 and 18 months postpartum respectively. So I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, as you should be, if you, uh, like if you compare, so Brooke, I would consider Brooke a particularly fit and athletic <laughs> human being. Now, if you compare yourself to like, you know, semi-professional iron women and stuff like that, yeah, you might, you might fall a little bit short, but most mm -hmm. human beings aren't running two marathons in a year. And most human beings that definitely don't work out um, and are as fit as you are kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, anyway, that was quite good. I was really, really proud of myself. And actually when I ran that marathon, um, I was like crying before I'd even started it. I was like, I can't believe, like, I still get teary thinking about that. Like I was so proud of myself just for even getting to that point like it was just uh, it was very overwhelming actually because I I thought that I wouldn't ever do that again I didn't think I'd ever be able to I didn't think I'd ever be able to like you know walk around the shopping center for over and you know for a couple of hours and just aimlessly and and not be in pain um so you know to kind of get through that um was just like it's honestly like you know, it's up there at one of the highlights. Like, I don't think there'll ever be a moment that will be that. And that was before I even bloody started the thing. So <laughs> when I actually finished the thing, I okay. cried for a week. <laughs> I was a mess. Like, oh, I'm, I cried and I cried. And there's pictures of me, like, just crying. 
<laughs> and the time wasn't particularly impressive. Um, I, I run, I run conservatively, but I was, um, I just felt like so, yeah, just um, so lucky to have been able to kind of go through your program and to have found your program and to, because it literally gave me back something I loved. It gave me back the ability to have children, which is like confidently, which, and, and I know because I'm, I'm on OP forums and um, anyone that's listening to this, if they're on, if they've found you through Facebook will have come across my name, I hope, and if they haven't, look me up because you'll see you'll see me um, come up through different stages of my journey. And I hope you see the early things when I was like in pain, because that's really, you can actually, when I read back through some of those things, it's like, Oh my God, I was in so much pain. I was in such a bad space. Um, but um, yeah, like I didn't, there's so many women that don't think they're going to be able to have babies again after having OP or if, you know, they just don't think it's ever possible. They don't think having a natural delivery is possible they think they have to have caesars which is completely fine if you choose to do it but if you don't want to do it you don't have to Mm. um because that's it's a big thing for women to be able to want to have the birth that they want and um i didn't realize how important that was to me until i was in it but it was actually really important to me to have control and to want to do that and yeah so yeah, that gave me back confidence to have more babies. I honestly don't know if I hadn't found your program. I honestly don't know if I would have had my 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 next two boys. Like, well, I, I I refuse to believe that because I think you would have found a way either way. But. <laughs> maybe, but I was pretty lost. And I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, because I've got on now to have two more boys. So I've got three children altogether now. We're very much done now. <laughs> um, but we're done not because of OP because we we literally can't manage anymore. But um. Yeah, I, I honestly would have, it would have taken me a lot of, I mean, I would have probably found a way, but I don't know how. Um, so I'm glad that, um, yeah, I got to have the age gap I wanted. I got to have my, I've got my three boys and that, and I had pain-free, a pain-free, I mean, I have had nickels. I'm not going to, you know, I think bodies are, it's one thing with, you know, I'd say that I, I would say that I'm cured of my OP but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's never, it's ever going to leave me. Like I'm going to, I have niggles, as you know, I've had one recently after kind of coming back from this pregnancy. Um, But I can control them now. Like I've got the tools. So I feel like I would say that I'm cured, but I think what your program has taught me is how to keep, you know, to what the reason I'm cured is because I know how to, to manage it now. And if I don't know how to manage it, I know, that I've got a team of people around me who can help me troubleshoot and I'm pretty good at troubleshooting my own problems, but I know that I can reach out if I can't. Um, but it's a never, you know, it's the body is consistently changing and, you know, you can't retain perfection all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you've got to, it's just something I've always going to have to work with and I'm cool with that. Like that's fine. Um, because yeah, you've always got to work at your body anyway. So you may as well, yeah, everyone's got to work at their body. So and if it's and if it's feeling good, right, then you're going to push it harder. And so when you push it harder, it's gonna, it's something's going to niggle at that point. Totally. It's like yeah, totally, totally. You know, and if it's not if it's not OP, okay, it could be a knee or it could be a foot or yeah, you know. So like you know, I've since you know doing the program, I've noticed like I've pushed harder. So yeah, I got foot issues, and I've had you know I've had um, I push harder, and I've had you know issues in my tight hips or you know so like there's things that have happened um as a consequence of me pushing harder but I know how to navigate those things now and they don't they don't scare me so yeah um it's constant um but yeah I think if I can get through two pregnancies post and post not postnatal periods post OP like I think my body's pretty strong I can get through those things now um I've got pretty good confidence in my body now and that's when I go and see like my physios or you know um who I won't see as much now but I'm not having any more babies but when I go and see you know people they tend to say you know your body you you decide like my trainers at the gym I've got a pretty I'm I'm on a pretty I go to a, a gym now and I actually have a program that I follow now um and trainers that I follow as opposed to training myself, I now have confidence in being able to kind of go into programs and exercise in those kind of environments. And they have, they also like can just see from the way that I train, I've got pretty good discipline. And I, I learned that from the program too. 
if something doesn't feel right, I don't do it. I do it my own way because mm-hmm. I know that I kind of know how to navigate that. So they have full trust in me too, to be able to navigate that. And they actually, they've said that to me, you've got really good discipline and my form is quite good. And I think I like that from the, the program. So I seem to know a lot more than a lot of other people do about the body. Um, and yeah, so I have good education too. Like I've learned a lot. <laughs> um, well, if, <laughs> if I was going to like, so I'm going to try and like summarize some of the stuff that you said, just, uh, and I'm going to try to do it in reference to like what I normally, like what I've kind of seen through. So just correct me if I'm getting something wrong when I do this, right? I think the biggest, so the biggest issue is like everyone walks around. Some people walk around with perfect form and beautiful posture. Some people work around horrendous, but most people walk around relatively pain-free, right? Their body figures out a way to do things. Does that make sense? And then I think when you get your first chronic serious injury, like, you know what I mean? Like the one, like, I think the most jarring thing can be, and again, you're, you're not a professional athlete, but you're still a good athlete. Like, to go from my body's fine I can go to netball and push myself I can go to the gym and push myself do you know what I mean like and I'm not the person who finishes last and I'm not falling over and things to go from that person to then a person who's like oh these scans are telling me about my pelvis is destroyed and now people are telling me I need to have surgery it's like this moment of where and like I went through the same thing with my back where you know people are like you have to get surgery if you want to get better from this and stuff like that um and as you go from this thing being like oh I'm a fit healthy individual I'm a, I'm a man and stuff and I can like do stuff to being like you know oh I'm kind of broken and I have to see the world in a different way to get by anymore kind of things and there might have been all these flaws about how you moved before but they didn't matter you were fine you had your way of doing things you did it you never thought about it, it it's like you know it's like going from being a child to being an adult, like where you first realize, oh, sand is not real or something like that. It's like, oh, I have to consider these things. And one of the first then steps as you go see a doctor, you go see anyone is you get put in this position where you have no control. You don't feel control of the situation. These mm-hmm. things are happening to you, right? And I think like the number one then flaw that we have when we treat these things is instead of going, oh, hey, like, yeah, you got, like, to me, you can't lie to people. It's just, it's really hard to get better from OP, right? Like, my next question is going to be for you to try to just impart on people how hard you have to work, right? Um, But it's like, oh, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to work. You're not going to get it. You're going to struggle, all these bad things, but you have control of this situation. This means this. This means this. This is why this is happening like this kind of things. And it's almost like even the thing of going, like, Okay, cool. So now when you talk about therapists, right, you're not in a bad way, but you're talking about us like tools. You're going, okay, I want this tool for this situation. No, I want this tool for this. This is what I'm doing with this thing, right? And that's really how it should be, right? Like, I mean, I'm good at certain things and then there's certain things I'm not good at kind of things as well, right? And, you know, like if I'm a good therapist, I'm going to tell you what I'm good at. I'm going to tell you what I'm bad at kind of things, but I might not do that as a therapist. But at the end of the day, right, like every patient should feel like they're in the position to wield tools as and what they need kind of things. Mm -hmm. Do that. Mm -hmm. Even like, so that experience, right, where it was like, hey, running's that thing. And I called you. I can actually remember that because I was in America at the time as well. So Mm -hmm. I have this vivid memory of like walking, like just going on a walk in like San Jose. Um, Like (laughs) being like, because it was really weird. You're walking through San Jose and there's like all these million dollars houses and you look around and you're like, this place is kind of trash. Like, why is that house worth a million and a half? Because it's all near the tech. It's weird. But I vividly had this memory of walking around being like, I don't feel that safe. And this is supposedly houses are worth millions of dollars here. I don't know how this country works. But yeah, I can remember. But even that is kind of going, hey, yeah, I like to do things in a sort of certain order, but that's not working. So cool. Let's talk about this and figure out like, you know, like what you need at the end of the day. And again, like, you know, if you said to me in stage three, I want to run, I would have been like, and normally you run at stage seven, anyone watching this, I would have been like, hey, like, hey, cool, you can do that, that's fine, but these are the risks, this is what could happen, sort of things, and this is what you should not so much expect, because, like, mm-hmm. you know, no therapist should have the arrogance to really be able to predict what's going to happen definitively, mm-hmm. but it's kind of, going, kind of going, hey, if you're going to run, then, hey, this is what could happen, this is what things, and, you know, if this happens, this is how you should interpret it, so if you run at stage three and you get some pain, it's like, hey, don't worry about it, it's not the end of the world, but you can't expect like that to be a reflection of how well you're doing on your rehab because you're doing something you're not ready for, right? But at the same token, if you at stage three had told me, hey, I'm I'm not doing well mentally right now. My head's not working. I can't focus on my rehab. And I'm going to go, hey, is it because you're not running? Hey, is it because you're not exercising? Is it because 
these exercises are really pedantic and annoying in stage three and difficult to focus and concentrate on and you need some sort of stress relief and it's kind of going oh hey because again you're wielding these tools and you know what I mean like in the simplest way possible you're paying us we work for you do you know what I mean like things and to me I feel like one of the major things that get lost is this is that people are just like hey you're broken you have no control you have to do this here are your options no other options exist like you know if you ask a specialist like about anything else it's like no 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 there's surgery or nothing else no 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 it's physio or something else sort of things no and you just get completely boxed in at least that's the way I felt it with my back and that's the way I see it from the outside looking at this it's so true it's like and and there's so many of these therapists don't you know whatever it is I mean I consulted uh doctors like sports sports doctors who you pay a mozza to see um I saw acupuncturists uh nutritionists I had a cortisone injection into my pubic bone which would have been the most horrendous thing I think I've ever done and the most uh the most exposed I've ever felt in my life by the way um that was horrible I've done so many things countless things bone therapy like so many different things and so many of those therapists and those doctors uh, there's probably it was well, none of the chiropractors so many of them didn't actually even ask me what it is I wanted out of working with them they didn't ask me what what being able to do A, B, C, and D meant to me. They didn't ask me what the pain meant to me um, and what I wanted to do with my, like they, no one really cared what I wanted um, to do. It was like, well, you can't run, mm-hmm. scrap it. You're going to have to have surgery. We can't help you. Um, just keep coming back eight or nine, 10 times. I mean, it was a chiropractor that tried to schedule me in for treatments for twice a week, every week for an unlimited amount of time. I think it was by the fourth week I realized that he was just, a, he, he had no understanding of my, what was going on for me because I was, my sister was also going to see him for a different issue. And she told me he was doing exactly the same thing that he was doing to me. You know, so it was like, nobody actually, so many of these therapists don't actually, they think you're a one size fits all and they don't actually talk to you about your thoughts, your feelings, how certain things may, how certain exercises make you feel what it is you want out of it, what it means to you as a human being. Um, yeah, which is, you know, why I think like when you when you called me that day and we were talking about our options and we decided to change the sequence up, well, you decided on my behalf to change the sequence up. Like that was you listening to me and hearing that I wasn't in the headspace to be able to manage that. Like my my body was ready for it, but my mind wasn't. And you got that. Um, whereas so many different therapists would say, well, you're getting pain when you're running don't run you know so I think that um yeah there's definitely it's you definitely got to find the right people to support you um in that that yeah and to me to put like try to put a finer point of that it's just thing so to me it's like some people get 100% pain free from this they literally finish they finish I never hear from them again and they're just great it's like they just leave it behind them and other people don't and but I don't think it really matters which one of those things you are, right? To me, all human happiness comes down to control. If you feel like you have control of what's happening to you, you're happy. If you don't, you're miserable. I don't think it matters how much money or how little money you have, whatever it is, right? So like, to me, it's like every job as a therapist is to bring control in by any means necessary back to that person in however it is, how much they want it. Like some people don't want all the control. They want to be like, you know, they want a professional to tell them what to do. And that's also okay kind of things as well. But like, it always has to be for whatever capacity they want that the person's in the, the client or the patient or whatever you want to call it is in the driver's seat kind of doing that. And that, that's the end goal. That's the end goal of any therapy is to put them in a situation to be healthy enough to do that for themselves in any way. And I think it's really hard, like if you're watching this, is like, yeah, so you've got this physical stuff you have to deal with, stuff like that, and it takes considerable time, considerable effort. But more often than not, I don't care how lazy a human being is, if there's something is aligned with what they want and how to get it, they'll kind of do it right. But that's not even right. People can want things and still not things. But if you can clear out all the psychological hurdles, most people will put the work in to finish something. Almost 99% of people will be. And then there's a lot of people who want something really badly and want to put the work in. And there's too many like hurdles in the way and it's fear and it's anxiety and it's the pain and it's all these kind of things through there as well. 
And it's also like, I think the hardest thing that I find to do is to try to express to people how equally important that stuff is. Mm. And that it's like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like everyone wants to fixate on the physical stuff because that's the obvious thing. Like my pelvis is an anterior pelvic tilt and I have have like fallen arches and I have like all these kind of things through there. And that stuff's all really important, but it's like, oh, how you think and how you feel about this and that feeling you get in your stomach when that pain gets there, when you take your first step in the morning, like that is all affecting your pain experiences, which is really affecting your happiness kind of things. And like, why are you spending money on a therapist or whatever kind of therapist it is? Because you are a degree of unhappy and you would like to get happier Mm -hmm. kind of things. And yeah, that's so hard to kind of get across as well because it's like, oh, that's equally as important and like, you know, I literally sometimes have people who feel like they don't have a right to talk about like, you know, oh, that they're unhappy and suffering, that they should just be grateful that like, you know, they're not worse than someone else and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, oh, that's so incredibly unfair because they, yeah, there are people a lot worse than you. There are also people a lot better than you. You have a right to be pissed off, but you're not like them kind of thing. Yeah, I know. It's all relative. Like if you're getting out of bed and you're getting pain on your first step in the morning, like no one else can feel that pain. That's your pain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah you know you live in your body so well, even um, like one of my favorite reasons is like so you run a marathon right you finish it like the beautiful thing I love about marathons triathlons all that stuff right is they're these incredible individual sports right like which have downsides right so, you know netball is amazing basketball is amazing you get to share it with other people but in your bread it is the most important thing in the world and to the rest of the world no one cares but and you know this you know this logically but it doesn't matter when you're on that race when you finish that thing it just doesn't matter it's like a magical trick where your brain believes the delusion and you just think it's the most important thing and it's just wonderful and it's great it's amazing but the problem is right is that like so you finish a marathon you get your time some people will be like oh my god you finished a marathon it's amazing oh my god you finished a marathon in like x amount of time that's amazing and then there'll be people who are like well, I know so-and-so who did it in this amount of time, right? Like there's this whole spectrum of people, but no one will really truly understand. It's like, I didn't just finish a marathon. I came back from scarring on my pelvis and a stress fracture and sitting down and trying to do a body squat for a million hours because my pelvis just would not rotate the right way and all these things. And no one ever gets to acknowledge that. And it's like my favorite thing of doing these things now because like I don't really have to do them anymore kind of things because I like doing them because it's just like, oh, someone should get to hear this story. And if this story helps someone else get their own story, well, it's this beautiful thing that just keeps giving and giving and giving, right? But like, yeah, yeah it's like no one will get it. And even though people will watch this, people will go through it. No one will truly get it to what you have to go through, but you kind of no. things. No. And it, yeah. And it's like, that's why. Like, that's why when I was at that marathon start line, I was crying before <laughs> I even started because I remembered doing that body squat for hours. I remember <laughs> sitting in my bedroom in a little house we lived in and and trying so hard to do, um, I think it was the upward dog. Mm-hmm. And get that right. I remember being on holidays in Darwin on tiled floor. I'd put, a, I'd tried to pad down because we were in a little hotel room with a baby sleeping behind, like behind on the other side of the bed, doing like bird dogs over mm-hmm. and over and over again while he slept, like, you know, just because I had to get it done. Um, and well, you didn't have to get it done. You wanted to get it done. I wanted to. I wanted to, and it's just, and I'm like, I, and I've, I, I guess um, I've had to do this now. I mean, I did the big rehab, the big, the big effort, obviously, when I first started with you for the, I think it was like six months I was working at it. Like it took me a really long time. There was a break in the middle, granted, but it took me a long time. And I have learned from you and I think from looking at other when I was reading about op i think on your website and looking at some of the other testimonials like you know op post-pregnancy is often the more complicated than you know op for um you know a sports related op or you know something that's come on through someone playing you know football or or something um for women who have had babies it can be a lot longer and a lot more variable because you've got hormones in play and Mm. um obviously the physiology of just having babies changes things too so um I did expect it to take longer and it did. It took me a while and that was partly physical, but a lot of it was emotional and me not being ready, you know, just to introduce things when they were coming because it is it is really hard work, particularly if you've been sitting on your OP for a year like I had been. 
because you know for no fault of my own but I've been dealing with that pain for a year and then all of a sudden I'm doing things that I hadn't been doing and I took I took hours and hours and hours and videos and just constant videos and asking my husband to take videos and me buying things and tripods and putting them in weird places and um tears because I couldn't get things right and you know I think there were days when I threw things across you know therapists across the hallway and you know just because I was just over it like it just because they are finicky they are really Mm. finicky exercises and you need to focus and it's really hard to focus sometimes when you're in your head you're in your own head and you're you know you're in I'm I'm my own worst critic I still am um but you've also got little people around you who also need you um and that can be really hard to um I know there'll probably be some, maybe some other mums who are listening to this who might be reluctant to get started. Your kids are not a reason not to get started. They're, they're actually a good reason to get started. Um, but they are they are a variable in your way that you need to kind of work out how you can keep going around them because they they do need you. So I'm, I've come back, obviously. I've had to do my, start my rehab again post having these other two babies. It takes a lot quicker. Like you're not going through you, you, my body doesn't have that same pain response anymore and I don't have I don't consider myself to have OP anymore but I still rehab myself like I did um and the the next like these two times I've actually because I've got more children I've taken myself off to a gym environment um until COVID stopped that the second time but to actually go and um do my rehab um uh, I'd still do some rehab at home but to do a bulk of rehab on my own where I could really focus um, just a quiet gym um, to take myself off, a daggy gym, you know, in the suburbs uh, in the middle of a day when I had support um, where I could, you know, uh, have an hour completely to myself to do my rehab. And that's been how I've targeted it, trying to come back from uh, in this kind of when I've tried to rehab after having these subsequent babies. But in saying that I haven't been in the same pain or anything like that, it's just been me starting again to get the foundations built so that I can move through it. And I moved through it a lot quicker, but um, I have to say when I did finally go to a gym space to do my rehab, um, when I got the confidence um, and when I was first going through OP and recovering from it, um, that was actually really good because I finally could concentrate. <laughs> and that was, I found the gym in the creation, put the baby in the creation. <laughs> get one it. So that was quite good. But yeah, it's hard work. It is really, really hard work. Um, blood, sweat and tears, I think they say. And, yeah, I talk about blood, but I definitely sweat and I cried. I cried a lot. So I think you I think you paid the price in sweat, tears and emotional anguish. Oh, yeah. And it just just because it was just, you know, it's slow and it's you have a vision of what you where you want to be and where you're at and um, the road to get there sometimes seems so long. And it was it was long, but I, um, yeah, I guess um it was also growing in confidence of, you know, I had to grow my confidence up as well. And I didn't have any confidence um, in my body. Um, I felt pretty broken. And also that came down to, to, I think the way I was treated when I had my baby as well, again, by doctors that just wanted to have me through the system and shut me out and didn't, didn't ask me any questions about my circumstances or my body or how I was feeling about certain things. Um, and so, yeah, I was a bit broken by lots of things lots of medical me, me, um, medical things too so yeah um yeah so it took me a long time so really the six months in retrospect probably wasn't yeah you know, it's a long mm-hmm. time but really it's not that long if you consider everything I'd been through in that wow year and, and that versus the rest of your life as well <laughs> it's not that long um and um yeah it was um and I know too, like a lot of people say that it's a costly program. It is, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's worth every single cent. Like, you know, because now I have a functioning body that I know the tools, I have tools that I can use to, you know, help when I've got a niggle or I feel a bit, I feel like my pelvis isn't holding up very well on the run or when I'm trying to do something in particular, I can troubleshoot that, um, you know, if I feel a bit of a, a niggle in my lower back when I'm deadlifting or something, like I, I, I feel like it's kind of, I have a, a better understanding of my whole body now because of doing this program. So I've got lots of, lots of skills um, 
yeah, in terms of managing niggles as they come. Um, like I had some niggles in my feet the other day and I'm like, yeah, I've got to do my footwork. Okay. Yeah, I'm like getting to there again. I've got to oh, do my that footwork. Just, that just warms my heart. <laughs> yeah 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 when you've got a bit of a needle and you're like oh yeah I don't want to I don't want to upset that <laughs> so, yeah it's my footwork so you know you've yeah you've taught me a lot <laughs> yeah well awesome thank you so so much for doing this and yeah anyone anyone who's watching this I hope you can take a lot but yeah thanks so much Brooke <laughs> you're most welcome thank you